Welcome to the vlog, ladies and gentlemen. We're here in the brewery at the end of the day. Today's Friday. And uh, if you look down here on the floor, you'll see that I've been a busy boy, that's right. So not only have I been labeling all day, but also I've been brewing a beer as well. So if we just come up the steps to the boil kettle, you'll see that in here, we've got a batch of the best bitter and that is just about ready to go. Oh, well, it's having a 30 minute um, steep with some hops in there and then it's gonna be ready to go into the fermenter. And at the same time today, let me flip the camera. I actually brewed the bitter a little bit over gravity, so a little bit sweeter than, you, you know, more sugar than you'd want. And then I took out these seven cubes, commonly known as no chill cubes, but basically I filled them up with the boiling hot beer and then let them cool on their own. And then that heat kills any nasties inside. So I've taken seven of these out, two, four, six, seven, yeah. And then I topped up the beer to the gravity that I wanted, that we usually have for the bitter. And the reason that I've done that is because around here, as a few of you may know, we have some yeast that we are wanting to put into some beers for the 4-4 can series that we've been talking about for a while. So I thought I'd just quickly give you a brief update on where we stand with that today. So I'm in the process of labeling the porter. Let's get round here. The porter. The plum porter is already labeled, but these haven't finished conditioning yet. They need to go back into what is the warm room to finish off. We've got a massive pallet full of vacant gesture here, sporting the new labels and the old. But fear not, if you order some of these and you get one with the old label, it's just the old label, the batch of beer inside is the same. Up here we've got the American Amber Ale. That's finished its conditioning. And then in the warm room, which I'll be fetching out shortly, we, in there, we have the Coconut Shy PA. That's going through its conditioning phase and the proof of concept, a big batch of that. So that I'm hoping is gonna make it for the 10th of October, as I mentioned earlier on uh, in the week. But until then, everyone, please keep your fingers crossed. So I thought what I'd do while I'm here is kind of just set you up on the tripod at the side and uh, just let you watch me label some beers. I'll put a little bit of music over the top and you'll be able to see the intricacies on how this labeling machine actually works. So here I've got a case of the porter. I'll just open the box up like this. As you can see, there's no labels on these cans, but they are seamed and dry. I don't think they have to be dry for the polypropylene labels that we've now got, but they've been sat in this box for a couple of days in the warm room, so naturally they've dried anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, do this lot and let you observe the machine in it, all its majesty.
So if you folks are curious about how this machine actually works, what happens is when I pull this lever down, it operates a little micro switch just under here and that tells the microcontroller to start moving the rollers. Just here in this little section there's an infrared LED and at the other side underneath the labels there's an infrared sensor and what that does is detect the gap between the labels on the backing sheet by terms of an increase in photons getting through if you like. Uh, every now and then this is just a sideline if I can find a screwdriver I'll put it somewhere obviously I've lost it there it is there's a little bar on the edge here that allows you to adjust the position of the label and every now and then the label just starts to creep a little bit up or down the can so we do a few little tweaks and there to keep it centra central as possible but the um, the infrared light and detector both pick up where the gap in the label is so as soon as the light will readily shine through this little gap as soon as it picks up an increase in photons if you like it triggers a little switch, electronic switch in there which then in turn resets the microcontroller back to its original state of waiting for an input from the micro switch which again is triggered by the lowering of this handle. Uh, the labels sit on a little spool on the back end there and they roll through the machine if we just ignore the decoder for the minute under this first bar through the infrared detector under a roller under there up through this driven roller here and over the top there's a blade on this side which peels off the label and as that driven roller rotates the can it also presses the label onto the can while simultaneously rotating it and then on this side, which I'm not going to move the camera again, but this side there's a few more guide rollers and then there's one more driven roller with a knurled backing roller or a knurled idle pulley and that grabs hold of the backing paper and that's basically what pulls the labels through. So that's pulling the backing paper. This driven roller is rotating the can. It has nothing to do with feeding the labels whatsoever and then you can if you like send the backing paper back under the bottom knurled roller and into there's another roller and I will pull it just down here with a little clamp on it and you can wind your label backing paper back up if you want to so that's the basic machine the MT50 it's called if on the other hand you want to add a date coder as well which I forget the name of it but I'm sure I've just shown you a picture. Uh, oh no, I can't see it. It's like an HG21, I believe, the name of the decoder. I can't fully remember. These come separately, or you can buy them as a pair. I bought these separately, so I had to do a little bit of problem solving on how to couple the two together. There is a video in my back catalogue, should you be so interested. But effectively, what I had to do was go and find the normally open contact of the switch which is uh, in there, or should I say normally normally closed, I can't remember now of the micro switch because obviously you've got two you've got normally open and normally closed in a common um, and that sent a 12 volt signal through a signal cable which is here to the control box of the decoder which triggered the uh, decoder to print effectively it was just waiting for this analog signal to come in to say start the cycle on the little control box that comes with the decoder is 
a timer so you can set a delay on how long you want the arm to stamp the date code in relation to when you've lifted the handle up. That gives it time for the labels to stop spooling if you know where I'm coming from. And then there's also a temperature control on there. Now the reason that there's a temperature control is because this section in here is where you put the uh, little fonts. So if I turn it around and take it out, you'll see that underneath, there we go, we have the batch code and the expiry date on this little brass insert. And that slides in there like so, it's hot. <laughs> and that little section there, if you can see it correctly, is a heating element and that heats up all this section which is why you've got these ceramic separators there so the heat doesn't transfer throughout the machine uh, so what that basically is doing is heating up the brass uh, fonts if you like and then this tape here I believe is wax it's a wax backed tape and then what you're doing is stamping the hot wax into whatever material you like. This happens to be polypropylene, works on paper, works on any slippery, shiny surfaces, uh, which is why they use wax and it basically stamps it on and it doesn't smudge, whereas ink might smudge or not dry or adhere to any of those glossy surfaces. So there you go. Just a little bit of a a walkthrough of how the label machine works simply because excuse me that's what I'm doing today I'm labeling there we go saved by the bell so that means that I have to continue to transfer <clears throat> excuse me got to continue the transfer of the beer that I've also made today into the fermenter uh, which means I'm going to have to put the camera down or turn it off. Anyway, I'm sure you've heard enough waffle from me. It was just a quick update and mainly to say that this 4-4 can for October is going to be available on the 10th of October onwards. I don't think there's going to be enough time with all the other jobs that I've got on to be able to do a 4-4 can in November. So we're going to jump straight to the Christmas cans and I'm hoping that we get more than four. So it might be a six four can. I don't know, we'll see how we get on. But I've got a beer to transfer and I'll let you know more in another video. So thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll see you on the next one.